Arch Linux has a reputation for being hard to install. Traditionally, Arch has been installed through the TTY or the command line. It is a very tedious process that requires quite a bit of knowledge and know-how when it comes to how Linux actually functions. You have to partition your drives, you have to mount those drives, you have to install the file system, you have to do the pacman command where it downloads all the Arch stuff, you have to do the pack strap, you have to do all this stuff one step right after another, and if you don't do it in the proper order, or you do something wrong, or you miss a step, whatever it happens to be, your system is not going to, to post, and you're left restarting the process from the beginning. There is a reason why Arch has that reputation. It is a situation where it's definitely not for new users, and it's definitely not for people who aren't able to easily follow instructions, and not even in the traditional sense of not following instructions, but not being able to follow you know, technical instructions. If you can't follow a technically written manual, which is what the Arch Wiki is, you're going to have a hard time installing Arch the traditional way. It's just kind of the way it is. And there's a reason why Arch Linux has become a meme over the last 10 years or so. I use Arch Linux, by the way. It has become a meme. And that's because the difficulty of installing it has given the people who install Arch Linux successfully a sense of superiority over the people who haven't even tried or people who have tried and failed. The whole idea behind that superiority is just simply because they've done something difficult, therefore they have a badge on their heart that says they install Arch Linux and they can be proud of that, right? Whether that's anything to be proud of is up for debate, really. But the whole thing of Arch Linux is that it has that reputation of being hard to install. The thing is, is that it's no longer true. With the introduction of Arch Install, which is an Arch Install script that comes on every Arch ISO, Arch Linux is no longer hard to install. It really is not. You run Arch Install, you fill out the form that pops up after you do so, choosing all of your settings, and then hit enter, and it's going to completely install your system. It will even install a desktop environment and Xorg and all the stuff that you would traditionally have to do by yourself. So Arch is no longer hard to install. It's actually really easy. So that leads me to the question of the day. Do we still need Arch-based distros? And really what I'm saying is not do we need things like Manjaro or Arco or even things like Endeavor or Garuda. Really what I'm asking is do we need the distributions out there that only exist to make Arch easy to install? So distributions that simply install Arch Linux and do so with the Calamari's installer and do nothing else that's special. So they don't have their own tools, they don't use their own repositories, they don't do any of this extra stuff, which would then make them a little bit different than what you'd get if you just installed Arch using Arch install. So I don't want to come across as bashing any of those distributions that do that extra work. Things like Zero Linux and Arco and Manjaro and Garuda and Endeavor all of those distributions do extra things on top of Arch Linux that make them maybe not special, but at least something that is worthwhile actually doing. But there are a ton of distributions out there that are Arch-based distros, but are simply Arch with a Calamari's installer. They proclaim that their only reason for being is to make Arch Linux easy to install. The thing is that Arch is now easy to install, so do those distributions need to exist? That's my question for today. And I'm not sure I really know the answer. So I'm never going to be the kind of guy that says we have too many Linux distributions, although I think I've made that argument in the past. So I guess I have been that guy. But really what I when I make that argument... It's not because I think that there are too many Linux distributions. I think that it's more that there are too many Linux distributions out there that don't have a proper purpose. If you make a distribution that has tools, that have that has a, a you know cool theme, that has a different desktop environment or a whole bunch of desktop environments or the ability to install something in a certain way, whatever happens to be, as long as you've put some effort into making your distribution somewhat different than the distribution it's based on, I'm okay for you to exist. Even things like Rebecca Black Linux and Hannah Montana Linux, those things, despite how silly and memefied they've become, they have a reason to exist. You know, they are fan service to actresses, singers. I don't know who Rebecca Black is. Do I look like I know who Rebecca... 
it doesn't matter. <laughs> you know, but you know, you get the idea, right? As long as your distribution has made some kind of effort into differentiating itself from the thing that it's based on, I think it's perfectly fine for many of those things to exist. It's when they haven't made a effort to do those things that I start to question it. So you guys have probably watched one of my videos before where I have taken a first look at a rare Linux distribution, something that I found on DistroWatch or something. And one of the questions that I always ask is, why does this exist? What is its purpose? And the reason why I always harp on that question is because I honestly believe that a distribution has to have something that differentiates itself from everything else. Or not even everything else, just something that makes it different than what it's based on. And if it doesn't, then why does it exist? What is the purpose of it? When it comes to Arch-based distros, whose only claim to fame is making Arch Linux easier to install, it becomes hard to answer that question because technically they're still doing something different than Arch Linux does. And that is my qualification for being okay to exist, right? They're, they are taking the Arch ISO and putting calamaris on it and making it easy to install Arch Linux in a GUI fashion. That in itself is a reasonable thing to do. And it has been for quite a long time. It's been something that pretty much since Calamaris has existed, basically since Manjaro was created, it's been something that many people have done to try to make Arch Linux something that is more easily accessible to the masses. And even now, when Arch is much easier to install, there is a benefit to having a GUI installer for Arch Linux, which is basically what a lot of these distributions are. So I guess the real answer to the question is yes, those things are still okay to exist. I'm not sure if the answer to the question, do they need to exist, is also yes. Because I know that there are a lot of people out there that prefer the GUI way of doing things. They don't want to use a terminal at all, ever, preferably ever in their entire lives. And that's okay. That's an okay to live your life if all you want to do is use Linux to you know, use your browser or manage your photos, whatever happens to be, you probably don't want to use a terminal to do anything. And that's okay. I think, however, that a lot of people get attached to the GUI the same way a lot of people get attached to the terminal, and it makes them inflexible. It makes them unable to do things that really are perfectly fine to do in one or the other. So people who are so attached to the GUI installers probably would never look at the, tradi the traditional Arch installer and think, you know, this is okay. This is something that I could do. And like I said, it's an okay thing to say. It just feels like there's not as much of a differentiation between the traditional terminal-based Arch install now and the GUI Calamari's installers that ex also exist. There used to be a, a really big gulf between them. In terms of ease of use. Now there's not that golf anymore. They're pretty much neck and neck. And that means that there's no longer any ex real excuse for you not to do just a vanilla art install. Unless you have a reason beyond just preferring the GUI. And whether or not that's an okay reason is really a personal choice. I don't have a problem with people preferring the GUI, if that's the way they want to do it. It just feels like they're adding an extra layer of abstraction on top of their Linux install that doesn't really need to be there. Because when you download someone else's ISO to install Arch Linux, you're adding an extra third party to the relationship between you and Arch that doesn't really need to be there. And that extra third party may or may not be trustworthy. I'm not really saying that they're going to be nefarious. It just, I'm really just saying that maybe at some point, something that they've added to the ISO or something like that may break your system or may be abandoned. So if they are trying to add their own repositories or if they're trying to add their own software, their own tools, whatever. If they do that, there's a chance that those things get abandoned and then your system no longer has parts that are functioning. And that's definitely something that is, you gotta kinda keep in mind when you add in that extra person to the relationship between you and Arch Linux. Also, sorry about the dog. So to bring everything back around to the original question of do Arch-based distros need to exist anymore? 
I think it's a kind of mixed bag. It's not as clear-cut of an answer as it used to be. I also don't think that the answer really matters because at the end of the day, people are going to make distributions whether they have a purpose or not, and I have no say in that. And that's okay, right? That's just the nature of open source and the nature of Linux. You make your own distribution, you put it out there, some people use it. Whether it has a function or a reason for being doesn't really matter at the end of the day. I will continue to ask those, that question over and over again. Why does this thing exist? But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. My advice for new users who want to try Arch Linux is to try Arch install on vanilla Arch Linux. You'll be happy you did, even if it doesn't succeed. Because it gives you more of an idea of how your computer actually works. And... When you actually use Vanilla Arch Linux, you can say, I use Arch Linux, by the way. So that's it for this video. If you have comments on this, you can leave those comments in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter, at the LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description, along with all my other social media stuff, Amazon wishlist, that kind of stuff. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast, just like all these fine people. Thanks to everyone who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all amazing, amazing, amazing people. So thank you so very, very much. Without you, the channel just would not be where it is today. So thank you again. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.